Welcome back to Understanding Human Anatomy and a continuation of the discussion of the retroperitoneal organs. Using the diagram we ended the last video on, I want to sketch in the inferior vena cava. And the inferior vena cava comes down to about the level of L4 and then divides into a right and left common iliac vein. So there's our inferior vena cava and I will sketch in the internal iliac vein as well. So, putting some labels on these structures, we have the inferior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, And the inferior vena cava continues superiorly above the level of this diagram. Our diagram starts at, at T12 superiorly, and the inferior vena cava passes through the diaphragm at the level of T8. We have the common iliac vein and we'll draw the label to the right common iliac here lying in the midline is the abdominal aorta and the abdominal aorta descends right in the midline, so it's just to the left of the inferior vena cava. And it descends to about the level of L4. And at the level of L4, it divides or bifurcates into a right and left common iliac artery. Like so. And then the common iliac artery will divide into an internal and an external iliac artery. So, again, let's put in some labels. We have the left common iliac artery
the external iliac artery and the internal iliac artery. Now, I'm not going to label the veins down here except to mention that the veins have the same name as the parallel arteries. So we have the internal iliac vein and the external iliac vein. Note that the right common iliac artery crosses anterior to the left common iliac vein. As it does so, it puts pressure on the vein because the spinal column is what is on the posterior side of the vein. That compresses the vein somewhat and restricts blood flow returning from the lower extremity through that vein. For that reason, deep vein thromboses are much more common on the left lower extremity than in the right because of possible restriction of blood flow through the left common iliac vein. Now, we're going to have paired segmental branches from the aorta And we're going to have paired segmental veins accompanying these arteries draining into the inferior vena cava. So we have several segmental arteries and veins uh, running next to each other. Then we have the renal arteries branching from the aorta. And the left renal artery is approximately in the transpyloric plane. The right renal artery is slightly inferior in its origin from the aorta. So they don't come off directly across from one another but staggered. Higher on the left than on the right, that's because the left kidney sits a little bit higher in the abdomen than the right kidney, and the right kidney is held down in the abdomen because of the liver, which is mostly over here on the right side. Along with the renal arteries, we have a suprarenal artery on each side going to the adrenal gland and we have a gonadal artery descending let me make the gonadal artery a darker red here so we can see it. 
gonadal artery descending into the pelvic region. So let me label these arteries I've drawn in. artery the supra renal artery artery of course is going to the kidneys the suprarenal artery is going to the adrenal gland and then the gonadal artery this would be ovarian or spermatic or testicular arteries depending on the gender And the gonadal artery originates up near the renal artery and descends because the gonad develops at the inferior pole of the developing kidney and then it descends down into the pelvis dragging the artery with it. I'm gonna now sketch in the corresponding veins so we'll have a renal vein suprarenal vein and the suprarenal vein on the left side usually drains into the renal vein on the right side it usually goes to the vena cava and then a gonadal vein accompanying the gonadal artery and again on the left side, the gonadal vein will generally drain into the renal vein. So that takes care of the paired arteries and veins. There are unpaired veins, and those are the hepatic veins, that empty from the liver directly into the inferior vena cava. And I'm not going to draw those in because they, they are actually within the liver. The liver surrounds the inferior vena cava. And um, if I draw the liver in, it will block most of the drawing. The unpaired arteries include the celiac trunk, which is projecting directly out of the screen at us and it will divide into three arteries the left gastric the splenic and 
the hepatic. Then we're going to have the superior mesenteric artery and it originates and passes inferiorly and to the right like this and notice as I'm coloring in this artery that it passes anterior to the left renal vein that puts the left renal vein sandwiched between the superior mesenteric artery and the aorta. And finally, we'll have the inferior mesenteric artery that passes inferiorly and to the left. So let me label these structures There's the celiac trunk, the superior mesenteric, artery, and the inferior mesenteric artery. and the inferior mesenteric artery. here. So those are the major arteries and veins of the posterior abdominal wall. Remember we're not going to follow out the branches of the celiac trunk, superior and inferior mesenteric arteries because they're going to structures primarily that are not retroperitoneal, that are peritoneal. I need to put them in there so that you see where they are and how they originate off the aorta. And again, I want to point out that the left renal vein is sandwiched between the superior mesenteric artery and the aorta. In the next video, we'll look at autonomic ganglia and at the kidneys. Thank you for your attention.